Hi there, this is Carl Irwin with another Blender tutorial. We're going to uh, take another look at our uh, animation, our glitch animation here, and we're going to look at uh, the possibilities uh, with animating uh, this text. So actually giving it some motion, uh, giving some motion to the motion graphics here, uh, rather than just compositing together a still frame uh, glitch. So let's take a look at what it looks like. This is uh, the final. And you may notice a few things about this. First of all, that the uh, glitch has motion to it. It's moving directionally. Uh, also, you might notice that there seem to be some atmospherics there, that there seems to be some kind of a smoky atmosphere that you can see in the glow, uh, and it's animated. So th this, again, is a two-dimensional, uh, actually a 3D composite of two-dimensional images. Uh, and uh, we're going to look at how we can use uh, Blender's uh, texture system, uh, it's procedural textures to animate uh, on two-dimensional planes and create some of these uh, assets that we can then composite together uh, using scene strips. So uh, very uh, basically uh, we have the exact same scene setup with all the same uh, scene strip inputs here. Again, all we're doing is we're changing the textures and materials uh, on the planes within those scenes. And that is one aspect that makes this procedural. Now, we again get a little less procedural the more advanced our animation gets. Uh, that means that we have to pre-render out the animated text uh, and composite that together, much like we did before. Um, however, this is about as close as we're going to get to uh, procedural uh, kinds of techniques uh, as we're relating what we're doing to the original After Effects uh, tutorial from Video Copilot. Um, in After Effects, again, the pre-composition uh, to pre-compose something is very similar to pre-rendering, so we have to do that manually. Now, the good news is, and I didn't do it here, but the good news is, is that you, you could potentially make a project uh, where all you would need to do is pre-render your text and everything would be lined up to get your assets put together um, uh, just by reloading the file and have your, your final output. Now, I did not do that. I, I took the time to uh, create a different scene where I pre-rendered the animation out, and then I took that uh, pre-rendered animation and then plugged that into the places where it needed to go. So uh, you could, if you're thinking far enough ahead, try to avoid some of those steps. Um, however, uh, that being said, you know, this, this is about as close as we get to procedural. Uh, we do have to pre-render a few uh, different things there. So you can see this, uh, uh, animation, this animated text kind of sitting in, uh, in state here, uh, coming directly from those original scene strips. I'm just going to show you how to make this animation uh, very quickly. This is going to be kind of a short tutorial. Uh, going on from here, we're going to get away from this project. In upcoming tutorials, we're going to be looking at uh, three-dimensional text. Uh, and uh, some things that we can do uh, using scene strips with three-dimensional text and some other motion graphics ideas and compositing various scenes together uh, using this technique. Uh, and then from there, I think we're going to be looking at, uh, in the near future, uh, some uh, tracking ideas. So ideas for using uh, two-point tracking uh, to do 3D composites. Uh, so there are some situations where you, we can do some uh, two-dimensional asset plane compositing in three-dimensional space uh, using simple, very, very simple tracking. Uh, and again, this is uh, not merely just uh, panning, camera panning tracking, two-point tracking, but even in parallax motion in space, there's some things we can do to get away with very, very simple uh, tracking procedures, uh, just with a couple of points, two or maybe three points, uh, and composite together two-dimensional uh, assets uh, in three-dimensional space and get some pretty convincing uh, 3D, you know, camera uh, movement with with assets composited in. So we'll be looking at that uh, in the near future uh, to examine some of those ideas. Uh, some ways to make maybe some very complex camera tracking situations you may have dealt with make them much easier. Um, so it, in a way it's going to be like dealing with um, uh, corner pin tracking only we're going to be corner pinning sort of in three-dimensional space, and uh, we'll look at what that looks like when we get there. Anyway, enough about the future. Let's talk about the present here. Uh, the text animation. Let's uh, look at a scene here that I've put together. 
So this is a new scene, and you can see here that my uh, text frame has been brought in. Uh, but what I've done with it is I have subdivided my original text, and then it's very simple, very, very simple what's going on here. And then I added to that a um, modifier over here, a subsurface modifier, where I can increase my subdivisions, set it to simple. Uh, and then I, underneath that, I put a displacement modifier on it. This is where the magic happens. So I put a new texture on the displacement modifier, and I tied it to an empty. Uh, and it's moving only on the x-axis, so the left and right. And if we look at the uh, texture slot, we can see what texture we're using. It is the same uh, cloud, uh, cell noise cloud texture, but... We can use the textures, the procedural textures in Blender, to affect our displacement in real time. We don't have to pre-render our textures in order to apply them to displacement. That's a very nice benefit. Uh, we don't have to uh, pre-render out a frame of this or an animation of it. It actually applies to the displacement in real time um, because we're not rendering out the texture, the, the visual texture of it. We're just using the data uh, to affect our displacement. So uh, that's a nice benefit uh, to the Blender internal uh, that we can use. Uh, so what it's doing is it's applying the cell noise uh, on the x-axis uh, based on these parameters here. So I can change my strength uh, to uh, affect my my displacement. And I can make it, you know, this is as crazy as I want to. Uh, now what I've done here is I've created some animation. I've keyframe animated uh, the strength on this uh, effect. I've also uh, done something else here. If I turn off my uh, display here, this empty, there's actually a few empties in here, but you'll see that uh, the empties are moving through space on the animation. So the empty related to this particular animation is moving uh, in Z space. And I also um, uh, uh, compressed it. I uh, scaled it on Z-Space to make it very, very tight. And what you'll notice here is as we watch the glitch when we get to these keyframes, not only will it move on the X-axis, but it will jump occasionally. We'll do a little bit later on here. And what's causing that jump, you can see a little jump right there. What's causing that jump is actually the uh, movement of the empty in Z space. Because as it moves in Z space, it picks up on a different uh, cell noise pattern. And then it quickly affects it in a very different way. So I've got two types of animation going on. I'm animating the cell noise in Z space um, so that I get some options. But I'm also animating the uh, strength of my displacement. Uh, to give it some uh, live motion, some multiple frame change rather than just a single frame uh, alteration in the glitch. So that's that. What you would do then is you would render this out uh, as a video file uh, that you can then composite together to make uh, your uh, glitch animation, much like what we did before. You can stack it up and uh, change the, uh, inside the video sequence editor, change the colors and uh, combine them in different ways to come up with a uh, final glitch pattern. Uh, the glitch pattern that we uh, got looks like this. Let me see if I can find it. Uh, glitch animation. Actually, that's the wrong one. That's the other one. We want the displ this displaced glitch animation. Let me find it here. Here we go. So I followed very similar procedures as I did with the other one and the video sequence editor, and I uh, combined different passes of that animation to get uh, something that looks like this. Now, what I did from there is I made my blurred versions of it as well. Uh, so I came up with something that looks like this. I gave myself a lot more space on the X and Y so that I wouldn't have to uh, mask it out shrunk down my text a little bit. Uh, and then what I did is I took this uh, animation of the blurred version and I brought it back into the same scene. Now you'll notice I've got some other uh, elements in here that are uh, turned off. Let me turn off this text for a second and I'll turn on these other uh, versions. We'll do this one at a time. Now on each of these, 
I have another subdivision, and I applied uh, a uh, subdivision surface modifier again, set to simple, so I can get some uh, additional subdivisions. I applied another displacement that affects the y-axis, and this is tied to another empty, which is moving uh, up or down in y space. It's set very low to very low strength, and this is just a cloud texture, regular straight-up cloud texture. And what I'm doing is I'm generating an animation that looks like kind of a cloud motion. You can see what's going on here. So I am affecting this, uh, if I turn off my you can see what's going on there. It's, it's rippling up on the Y axis using that cloud animation, that cloud texture, that procedural texture, and I end up with something that looks like this. Now I made another version of that that I placed on top with a much smaller uh, uh, noise. Uh, if I uh, turn off my render set, you can see that it's a much, much smaller kind of waveform. Uh, and that's moving on the other direction. So it's moving down at a different rate, tied to a different empty. Uh, and you can see what that animation looks like. Now what I did is I set this to an add blend mode using the game engine options for the material. Uh, and I set it down to about 0.5. And then I uh, applied both of these at the same time. And I end up with an animation that looks like this. So it kind of looks like a, a spinning vortex of smoke around my text. So when I render this out, I can then apply this as the blur overlay on the text in my final scene. And if we go back to that scene, we'll see what it looks like. If I go to the uh, text strip, you can see what we have here, this final animation. We're looking at that overlay of the smoke on top of my uh, glitch text. Uh, and this is merely, you know, how we composite together. We composite it exactly the same way as we did before. Uh, we're just using animated uh, videos that we've created using uh, procedural textures and displacement. Uh, so that that's, you know, how this is done in a nutshell. And then uh, just by applying these textures, I automatically will have uh, everything lined up in my final uh, original scene render. I just have to reload my uh, Blender file and everything will be in place without changing anything inside of my final composite. These uh, uh, scene strips are already set up to uh, render out. So again, that's the procedural aspect of doing this. Uh, so that's it. Uh, you can use animation uh, inside of a scene to animate uh, two-dimensional planes uh, and then composite those planes together to get this kind of a motion graphic uh, sort of uh, uh, outcome. Uh, so there you have it. Uh, again, in the future, we're going to be looking at some three-dimensional text uh, uh, ideas using some scene strips and compositing different elements together. We're also going to be looking at uh, creating motion blur live directly from the VSE using this uh, uh, technique where we can have a uh, oversampled uh, scene strips, uh, but we only render out the frames that we need, which will help us to do our uh, poor man's motion blur a little bit more quickly uh, directly from uh, oversampled scene strips. Uh, so there you have it. Um, uh, animated text, uh, motion graphics idea that uh, gets us closer to that uh, original video copilot um, project that uh, you may have seen. Uh, and I wish you the best of luck with this and uh, happy blending.